Knock, knock. <laughs> namaste, 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 everybody. <laughs> knock, knock, who's there? <laughs> Good morning, everyone. It is I, Kutumi. <laughs> oh, what is happening to the music over there? Good question. <laughs> <laughs> it couldn't have anything to do with me, could no. it? No. no, especially not. Well, hello everybody. I just wanted to take a short interlude into your day to make the time to come in to this body again, to come into this energy again, because it has been a very, very long time since I have spoken to all of you to everybody out here and most of you and most of my colleagues and friends probably thought I was taking a long vacation but I was not I have been in that space my beloved Imzaya I have been in that energy field that you would call the Akene that you would call the heart of all things and in that fashion I did indeed take a vacation yes don't mention the music don't don't just let it happen it is all about vibration my lovely james <laughs> haven't you ever heard of the schumann resonance <laughs> ah, there you go so anyway opening up this seminar is something that i am looking forward and now i am here doing it <laughs> It is hard for me to speak. It is the first time that I speak in these free energy times and I find that the connection to the channel, to the Jeshua, is different than the one that I used to share with everybody who did come in. Again, as others have said as well, it is not anymore about me connecting to this body and then coming out of here. It is about me connecting to everybody here in the room and everybody who is going to end up hearing, everybody who is going to end up reading and watching what is happening at this very moment. So it is kind of a very schizophrenic state, I should say, to be channeled in this way, to come out of this body in this way. It is kind of schizophrenic. And I wanted to share it with you because it is also happening to you, Imzaya, and Chambra, and Lightworker, and whoever you are. It is happening to you as well. I'm going to give you an example. And I also want you to know that we are still going to do the meditation that was promised you. I am going to take care of that. Isn't that going to be nice, doing the meditation with this thing? Yes. But I want to share something about the schizophrenia. I am sure that all of you here, all of you listening, all of you watching this, have gone through a time of schizophrenia in the last few weeks or even months as you started this process. It's not easy in sending. It is not easy letting go of personality. Some of you were even talking about it right before this gathering here started. The incension process is nothing else than a reconnection of all the separate lives that you have lived on this planet Earth and on other planets, in other star systems, in other galaxies, in other dimensions as well. All of these lives are like rays of light, colors of a rainbow that have been forced into separation have been forced into a linear time frame. And as that happened, you think you are this unique individual. You think you are this, this special human and that at the beginning of your life, you even think that you are the most unique being on Earth. And in fact, you are. However, not in the way you think. Not based on personality-driven issues. Not based on all of those things that you hold near and dear to your heart, that you would hold sacred. However, however, the incension process is about becoming 
that unique soul spark all over again. Working with the Akene, becoming this Akene being, this sovereign servant, as Ekara would call it, is all about reclaiming that uniqueness. You see, the God spark, the divinity spark, is the most unique thing that there can be in the whole whole, basically. Because think about it. Oneness, divinity. There is only one. It is unique. There cannot be anything else. Reclaiming that on this planet Earth and at the same time acknowledging that in all things around you, in all people around you, that is what it is really all about. Now, I have told this story in the last few decades as I came into planet Earth in this fashion. And I have told a story about how I went crazy. And I know that we laughed about it. You laughed, you laughed at me about it. That I went crazy. <coughs> and I did. But what is the craziness all about? It is not I that called myself crazy. It is the world that called me crazy. Because all of a sudden... I had recollections and memories and insights that did not belong to my personality self that I was carrying at that time. I did think I had gone crazy because there was nobody around. There weren't any channels around, you see. There wasn't any information around. There weren't any books written on ascension or insension as of that date. It all came afterwards. You are very lucky people. You have all the information at your fingertips. You have this whole world of information that you can browse through and connect to to see what really happens when you are going through the process that you are going to. I didn't have that. Now think for a minute. Think that you are somewhere on this planet Earth, all alone, nobody around to share what is happening to you. And all of a sudden you have these memories. You speak in different tongues. All of a sudden everything that was important to you is no longer important. And you have no basis, no paradigm, no field of reference. You would think that you had gone crazy, isn't it? So that is what happened to me. And that is why I always joke about it. Because in a way, we are all crazy beings. That is what being unique is all about. And you should be crazy for coming here to this earth and going through this experience after all. <laughs> but what I really wanted to talk to you about is the schizophrenia. I'm going to use an example now of the channel, the Jeshua, and actually Ekara was going to talk about this, but I always like to, you know, sneak in and put my, my two cents in, because otherwise nobody ever lets me in, you know? they never do. I don't know why, <laughs> I think I have the most lovely voice in the universe. About the channel, flying here, and some of you already know this, obviously. Flying here was a bizarre event for him. Because usually, he never goes back to the past. Usually, he doesn't think back to things that happened in the personality life before he let go of the personality life. But all of a sudden, on the plane, flying to Fort Wayne here, it was like a flow of past events, personality past events, not a, I'm not talking about other lives, personality past events flowing back into the person. And that was very unusual. It had to do with old loves, old homes, patterns, 
all of these things that used to be important to the personality but are no longer important to the Jeshua obviously because they are not really a big part of his field of experience but it did happen and at that moment the channel that I'm working with right now really thought that it could be possible that maybe just maybe all the work that he was doing and everything he was putting out there was a result of having gone crazy isn't that interesting of having become schizophrenic I know that some of you here think it isn't true but it is true it did happen it is what happens when the external mind again tries to take over the integration process the insension process and since we are going to take the next steps with the Freedom Chronicles coming up very soon I want to share a little bit of this knowledge with you because you are going to go through it too even if it hasn't happened to you already I am sure it is going to happen to you as you are becoming whole again as you are becoming one with all that you ever was all that you are and all that you ever will be again the external mind and that which you would call the grid or the matrix is going to try to snap back into place it is logical it is a system that is designed to do this and therefore I must warn you that you are going to have to be pretty strong you have gone through this knowledge now on a theoretical level and most of you even have begun experiencing the practical side of it but but you have no idea yet what it is going to be to live this as your everyday life experience oh I know you you have flashes of it and you have moments of insight and moments of clarity but still most of you are still looking at reality although on a theoretical level you know it is you as something separate and you sit on the chair and you think oh that is a comfy chair or you have the cloth around you and you think it is warming me it is making me warm or it is making me comfortable or you look in the mirror in the morning and even your hair you see as something separate from you because you have to take a tool like a comb or a hair blower or whatever you call it dryer okay I like blower I like blower a hair blower and you have to do these things to your hair or you have to go to an external person called a hairdresser to work with your hair it is nonsense you are the hair but if you can even see that you are the hair and you need other things to take care of it however are you going to blend all of reality around you it even happens within the physical body because you walk around on this planet Earth and you have your experiences and you have your jobs and you have your things to do and you have the food that you eat and you have everything that you have and then all of a sudden something goes wrong within the body an organ fails or whatever might happen in the body or a mutational growth that you would call cancer occurs and that you see as something external to you as well even though it is happening within you if you were to really see these things as part of you they would not last for five minutes and I know you've been talking about it so that is why I wanted to use this as an example you see. because really a great example it is you look at the things around you the things around your, your your hull basically if you were a ship 
and the things within you, within the whole, still as being separate. And that is what is causing so much of the irritation and the schizophrenia that is happening with you right now. Because as all of these things, all of these lives, all of these aspects of you are becoming one with you again, you are going to have less and less external recognition with the things that you see around you. It is all coming from the inside now. It is all, as Solaris would say, it is all pouring out of you. So nothing can ever be external to you. Working with the Akene and God knows, it has had several names over the years, before the Muria, for instance. But working with the Akene is understanding and accepting and acknowledging that simple fact. It is that simple, Isaiah. And yet, you do not really acknowledge it. You wake up and you think you have to travel <laughs> to get from one place to the other. You wake up and your, let's call it, external stomach, because you think it is something that is just happening in the body, growls. And you think, I am hungry. And I need to put something external inside of me to make the external feeling of hunger stop. Did you ever consider that the apple that you are eating as breakfast, for instance, is pouring out of you as well? And did you ever consider how ridiculous it looks to us when we see you creating the feeling of hunger and then going hunting for an apple or whatever it is that is already pouring out of you as well, and then put that back inside of you <laughs> on a physical level so that you could be satisfied. <laughs> I know I like a nonsensical field, but you people have made the earth more nonsensical than the nonsensical field. Really? So the schizophrenia is all about that. You know, if you should go to any psychologist or maybe any doctor, and you would say, Doctor, I have a problem. You are pouring out of me. <laughs> Doctor, I have a problem. I believe that desk that you're sitting behind is me. They would think you are nuts, right? They would lock you up. Or you would have to have a light worker, Doctor. Maybe then you could follow. But what I'm saying is, it is a very natural process that you are going through right now and you might feel alone and you might feel as though your old life is sometimes trying to catch up with you and you might feel even the desire and that is what happened to the channel on the plane you might even feel the desire to go back you might even feel the desire for old things mm -hmm. that it wasn't so bad after all this old planet earth and it wasn't so bad after all to come home at night to a lovely apartment and to watch the episodes on television of the soaps that you love to follow and to do this and to do that and to have the sex and to have the this and to have the that. It could be very easy to want to go back into that sensation. But then there is a little trick that you can do. And I like to call it Zen-sation. You have talked about this, haven't you, Kumaya, earlier in your existence here on this planet Earth? When Adam is talked about the blending of the senses, he literally wanted to give you the feeling that you are all that is. A Zen-sation is that feeling, is a complete feeling of harmony and balance between you and all that is around you. 
going back to the apple and the stomach and the feeling of hunger, it might be difficult for humanity, even for you at this stage, to just acknowledge that the feeling of hunger is an illusion. But how about you, before you eat the apple, do a little experiment with it? How about you find a quiet space next time that you're hungry and you take your favorite food? It doesn't matter what you take. It could be an apple. It could also be a snack. It could be chocolate. Actually, I'm giving you the world's best diet ever. You can eat anything without eating it. Let's say an apple. And you put the apple in front of you. And you sit down. And you get the feeling of hunger. And you don't try to fight it. You just accept it. And you see that basically what the external mind is telling you is that there is a lack within you. That there is a gap within you. So what the external mind does is it creates the separation, the lack that you feel, and then the creation that you have created to take that feeling away again, namely the apple, is also separated from you so that you have to go through the trouble and through the negative experience, basically, of eating it. I will explain in a minute why it is a negative experience. But instead of doing that, why don't you just put the apple in front of you and connect it to the feeling of hunger that you have? And then you just let the energy flow back and forth. You will see, after a while of trying this, that the feeling of hunger will go away the apple will still be there, it will not vanish all of a sudden, but it will again come pouring out of you. You see? So the only thing to take the feeling of hunger away that you have to do is acknowledge that what you are about to eat is already within you. And I call it the world's best diet because you can do it with anything. You can actually do it with all these foods that you like, but that would be bad for your body. They're all the same energy anyway. Do it with the things that you like most, but do not desire them. Just accept that they are already a part of you. And that way, you can actually stop eating after a fashion. Now, I do want to give a small warning. If you do the exercise, and you're doing it for an hour, let's say, and the hunger is still there, please eat the apple. Mm -hmm. Because I don't want you to go into the illusion of death, to come back to the planet Earth again, go through the diapers again, and everything like that. But, never give up. Keep doing that exercise. You know, you have said goodbye to old lives anyway. What else is there for you to do with all the free time that came? You have made a choice. <laughs> what? Free time? Yes, free time! <laughs> you have made a choice to start the ascension process. And it involves that at some point, in Zaya, you are going to have to break away from the old lifestyle. And it begins with the most basic things. The most basic things. What is more basic than food? It is something that is common to all on this earth. Even those who on this earth would say that they are eating light. And I'm not talking about Weight Watchers or light foods that you can buy in the supermarket, but eating light. There are actually people, there's somebody in Australia and actually on other places in the world as well now, that actually take light to them and eat it. They are also taking part in an external process. And it's the same thing. They are just not using their digestive, digestive tract. They are just using their, let's call it the chakras, to, to take in the food that is light, that is energy. That is the same as the apple, only the apple is material and the light is not. 
But again, you have made the choice to begin a new life on a new planet Earth. And you are going to have to be the ones that are going to change the paradigm. Because the human animal, really, is still locked into the matrix, locked into the grid. And if there isn't a person or several persons creating the change, beginning things anew, doing things differently, then you're going to be stuck. Now, as Adamus has already told you, I don't want to come in here anymore as a teacher. I want to come in as a friend. In the old paradigm, before the free energy opened up, we all came in as teachers. And we taught for about an hour, and then we went away again. So it appears. I want you to know that we are equal. That we are the same. That we are doing the exact same thing, and we are working on the same team. You see? We all have the same mission of freedom and love and joy and oneness and total and utter liberation of all things. I have chosen, much like Adamus and many others, to be on the supposed other side so that we would not have the same influence of the matrix that you would have as you came in here as the ground troops, so to speak. But you must know that the ground troops are not the same thing as they are meant to be in the military. In the military, the ground troops are the ones that are expendable. They are the ones that are the cannon flutter, that can be shot to bits. In this team that we are talking about, actually, we would be the ones that are expendable. Because if it is not for you coming in here, we could all have a party upstairs, but if you weren't downstairs doing these things, things could not change here. And if things don't change here, things don't change all over this galaxy, you see. So back to the schizophrenia now. Not as a teacher, but as a friend. Back to some exercises now, not as a teacher, but as a friend. The old life had many limitations, so many that they are even uncountable. Everything that you do, everywhere that you went, all of your day's activities were all brought forth from separation, from limitation. However, the big thing is that the mind, or as Solaris would call it, the mental mind, or the external mind, made it so that you actually started loving your limitations. And that you actually started embracing the search for the, how should I say it, the discontinuation of the limitation in a moment of limitedness. You see, think about it. All of your life you are searching for these things. All of your life you are running after one thing and after another and after another and it is because of the limitation that you have as a human being and when you do find what you are looking for all of a sudden you feel wonderful for a moment and then it's gone again it is with food it is with sex it is with every hype it is with everything even the hobbies that you had or the passions that you had Think about, because there are two musicians here in the room, think about music, gentlemen. Think about it. You feel good when you are composing. It is a limitation. 
you need to go into a studio or you need to set up a system. You need to think about it and then you need to create it. I and others have already told you that on an Achaeneic level, on the Achaeanet, you are constantly creating music if you were to be a musician. And you were creating music that are not limited to the instruments that you have. You see, it is a continuous birthing experience. And that is the big difference. That is going beyond the limitation. The reason why you are feeling schizophrenic sometimes, or strange, or you feel that you don't fit in, or you have these crazy ideas, is because you are stepping away from these limitations. And the mind has trained you to accept the limitation, and that is reality, and that is part of normal life. You are no longer, I'm happy to say, <laughs> part of normal life life. You are reclaiming your energy and in doing that you are becoming one with all things again. You are actually becoming unique again because that is what your governments have done. They have taken away your uniqueness. They have taken away your power. As the, the channel said a, a while ago Think back 20 years, and I know this is true for every part of the world. Think back 20 years, and then think of the place that you were living in. And then think of the next village, or the next town, or even the house of your neighbor, the inside of that house. It was unique. It was a unique expression of self. Now come back to the moment of now and look at the world. Look at America and then look at Europe. Look at one town and then look at the other town. They're all alike. Everything is the same. Everybody is expressing themselves in the same way, going to the same shops, buying the same food, buying the same clothes, wearing their hair as fashion wants it. Your uniqueness in that way is also being taken away. I know that Ekara is going to talk a lot about Lemuria, and there is actually two parts of Lemuria to talk about. The part when things were still fluid, and the part when things started to become solid. I know that you don't know this yet, most of you, but Lemuria, in all its time, started out as a fluid society. And it is during this time that slowly but surely things became solid and people took on shape. And instead of wearing your colors like you would wear an outfit, all of a sudden you needed to create the outfit. You see, that is how it slowly started to change. But I can tell you one thing. There wasn't a Walmart in the Moria where you could all buy the same clothes. Even those who are rich and would go to the special, expensive, fashionable places are still buying the same things. They're just more expensive, that's all, and that's why they feel they are more unique. But they are buying the same things. The schizophrenia is letting go of all of that and what can happen then is a type of depression where you seem to fall into a bottomless pit. What is going to happen to you now? What are you going to do? Where are you going to go? What are you going to do with all these memories that are now again part of you? Even though you might not have full access to them yet, you know that things are different even though you might still be undergoing the process and you can't really connect to your wisdom. You know it is there. And you know that you can never go back. And at the same time, as this whole process is going on with you, the grid, society, government, the matrix, call it whatever you want, seems to attack you more fiercely 
some of you can handle this others are going to have more difficulty I know that a lot of you and again I'm talking to everybody hearing this or reading this are you falling asleep? No. <laughs> <laughs> it looked like it. <laughs> Shall I sing you a lullaby? Mm -hmm. oh, I'm not going to. <coughs> if you haven't got your hair, I would have. You believe in separation, so you sing your own damn lullaby. Anyway, <laughs> I know, I know that a lot of you know and feel, and they think it's crazy, that they are being targeted. I know you feel that sometimes. I know you, you, you think you're crazy after you have felt or thought it. But I can assure you, it is true. Sometimes you are being targeted. And you are being watched. I can tell you this, I can guarantee it. You are being watched. You are being followed, not physically, I'm talking matrix level. You are being misunderstood. Actually those within the matrix and working to keep it up, basically, do not get you because they really like it here. They really like where this place is going and that is because they do not know the whole story. They talk about globalization and they talk about the continuation of the economy which is almost like the poetry of this modern time economy. And they talk about all the technological advances that this world is going through and it is so special. And they talk about that in a couple of years people are going to go to the stars. And they are going to experience this beautiful, beautiful journey. And they are going to make contact with aliens. <laughs> have you lost your mind? Or, or, yes, you haven't. <laughs> but have you lost your marbles then? Do you really think that that hasn't happened yet? Do you really think that in Lemuria, for instance, people weren't connected to the stars? weren't connected to all life everywhere at any given moment. That is the way things used to be. And much in the same way as you were fooled into believing that Columbus actually discovered America, you are now being fooled into believing that you are going to discover Mars and that you are going to discover a planet outside of your solar system. And that you are going to discover that alien race. Oh, it is coming. It is coming. It is actually being prepared as we speak at the highest level of your government. It is being prepared. Oh, and it's going to be a war. It's going to be presented as though this race wants something from you. It's how it always goes, isn't it? It's what they did to the Indians when actually... Britain and other places, Spain and such, went to America. Do you think that they said, that they told the people in Europe, oh, happy day, we've met a new race? No, they actually started out saying that, but then all of a sudden, supposedly, the Indian turned and became negative and became a threat and had to be exterminated. I know who they were a threat to in Zaya. They were a threat to those controlling you because they had the authentic knowledge. They had the authentic wisdom. They were in the place that you are now again returning to, you see. And it seems appropriate to begin this five days together in this way very appropriate it seems appropriate to talk about these things because you are going to blend again as you are going to enter into the Lemurian art of Eya Ichiba and as you do that your life will not be the same afterwards especially if you go very deep into it 
So it is very appropriate that I talk about the schizophrenia that you might come to feel in the coming days. It is very appropriate that I talk about separation, that I talk about conquering, that I talk about war, and what else is to come in your existence here within the matrix. All I am asking, however, is to not buy into it. And the moment you start hearing about things from your news or whatever, that I'm saying to you right now, please don't be silent. Come out and show that there is another way. I know that most of humanity is still within the mental attitude right now and you are moving or have already arrived in that which you would call awareness. I know this. But you are the bridge. And that is why you are doing it first. Never forget that. So as you go through this phase, as you will be attacked by the mental matrix, do the same thing that you can do to anything, that you can do to pain. Just breathe it in. Allow it to be there. Know that it is a part of you and don't fight it. Be grateful for the experience that you have had here as a human on the planet. And begin these exercises of the apple and of so many other things. It is to be found always, is to be found in the practical side of things, not in the theory, not in the big talks like the one that we are having here. This is just an opening into your real world. And the real work is done on the most personal levels of all. It is done on the inside. I gave you the example of the apple and the stomach and the feeling of hunger. You can start there or you can start any other place that you want to start. Oh, and I know that others like Ikara and Solaris are going to come in and they're going to give you the big story. They're going to give you the big news, the big change, the tools that you need. But I could do me. Come in and talk to you about an apple. It is the way it shall always be and always has been. And both are necessary on the path that you are on right now. You can choose if you allow this talk of mine to be part of the great whole of information that you are bringing out. Or you can choose that this was meant for you. In this time of sovereignty, in this time of ekaraya, as you would call it, it is up to you to decide what happens to the energy. And if you should decide that those hearing it afterwards is not a large audience on a website somewhere, <coughs> but is those people that you meet in your daily lives, then so be it. We do not seek fame. We do not seek to get out there with our knowledge. We just seek to touch hearts because one thing we know for certain my beloved brothers and sisters if one of you goes all the way so to speak then all of you eventually will there are some who have progressed greatly in the last few months on this path and the path ahead is still long I know it might appear in this mental matrix to take a lifetime 
at the same time, once you break through it, you will notice, and that is the beauty of it, that all that time that you experienced as you grew and grew and broke free hasn't happened at all. I can tell you one thing. You will know that you are through with your journey, not because you are going to break free and you are going to ascend and angels are going to surround you and harps will be played. You will know when you break free when all of a sudden you find yourself back at the very first moment that you ever heard that this around you wasn't real. That is where you will end up. Now is that crazy or what? That is how it works. All of reality, all things are basically a giant loop and there are loops within loops within loops within loops and some form the infinity path and others form the circular path and others even because of all the loops being put onto each other form the linear path and that has a beginning a middle and an end but I tell you this at the end of your journey of breaking free you will find yourself at the very first minute of your journey. And that could take you back years into the past. But that is when you'll know that time isn't real. And that is when you will know that you are ready to do your work for real. That is when your graduation day has finally come, so to speak. Now I know that there are those who have questions about this and I am told since the whole team is gathering behind me right now that when Akara has spoken today that my good old bugger Adamus will come in and have a face-to-face heart-to-heart conversation about these and more topics with you today. And with that being said, all of these things, I would like to go into a little meditation with you. So, it appears I am all of a sudden singing. Oh, it is James. Just relax. Close your eyes. I'm going to invite you to focus on the energy of love. Give love. choose the rainbow. Focus on that. And don't yet focus it on a space. Just focus it anywhere. This abstract color of love.
this color, my beloved, beloved family, you are breathing on the inside. Did you notice? Did you know that you actually have the same senses on the inside of you that appear on the outside of you, on your body, somewhere deep within. You can breathe energy, taste energy, smell it, hear it, touch it. So breathe in this color now on the inside. connection. 
connection is made? Does it bring you
just acknowledge it, celebrate it. As you celebrate it, you are no longer looking for it, it is already there. In fact, I am taking you through a process that is already finished. central point in the middle. Do it slowly now. Allow yourself to just be there as Lemoya, creating the cocoon for you, is going to start moving these points together ever so gently. Coming back into your head you feel the flow of magnetics building up, going faster and faster and faster. And all of a sudden, it is going to connect together. So hold on, it's going to create a magnetic infinity loop. An infinity sign running through the center of your head. Get ready. We are going to count down to the moment when these points will connect. Starting from five, four, three, two, one. Connection. It flows through your body. Feel how your brain is all of a sudden, because of this magnetic infinity loop, sending other signals through the rest of your body. It is sending the holographic input again, instead of the material one. This way you allow your brain, which is matter, to send to your body that it is not real. It doesn't have to disappear though, it can still be there. Just sending that message. Know what you truly are. Divine one. Know what you truly are. Oh. And as that infinity anger, that infinity magnetic loop is becoming faster and faster and the signal is sent to the brain through the whole body, we are taking down 
all of that energy again. Taking it all down. And we're taking it down into the thymus. So the triangle and the pyramid has now turned into this infinity. And you will see that as you take the infinity down into your thymus, part of it remains in the head. Part of it remains in the head chakra. And we're taking it down now, copying it into the heart chakra as the infinity runs through the thymus, the center of the heart chakra. And now the heart is sending the same message to the body, still basing itself on the color of love, filled with geometry, filled with magnetics. And the heart now understands the truth of the body, that it is but a vessel, it is but a temporary shell, but what is underneath isn't temporary, what is underneath is infinite and one and divine. This time, in the creation of the Akene, we are also going to include the third Kakra to make it more complete, you see. So we are going to take this center of infinity and take it all the way down through your belly into the passion Kakra. third copy, infinity loop through the passion chakra, and again this passion chakra is sending the same message to the body, do you know how much of your search in your human life is dependent on these three points, the head which is always looking for the next bit of information, for the next knowledge, for satisfaction. And the heart which is looking for where the love is going to come from. And the passion chakra which is looking for that space where the next satisfaction of passion is going to come from. All of them are at ease now. All of these points understand that what they are looking for is not real now. You are close to home. The point in the head and the point in the passion chakra, both of them are going to begin moving with the assistance of Lemoya and others towards the heart. And as they will arrive there, you will notice what will happen. You will create a spiral of energy beyond geometry beyond magnetics, beyond gravity, it will be Akinik. It will be infinite. And be prepared because we are going to come down again. Be prepared for what is going to happen because all of a sudden, all of the past energy of all your lives and all lives that were ever lived in the universe and all universes surrounding it and all of the future lives are going to start running through the heart space. This is big, Imzaya. This is very big. So big even that you might not acknowledge it at first. But with a little help of your friends, we are going
going to do it anyway. So let's start again. Bring this head point and this passion point into the heart. For the sake of completion, we are going to count down again. From five. And it 
is coming out of your head. It is the spiral of the sound that you are hearing and it is connecting, creating patterns, interference patterns with the spiral coming out of your heart. And as it is doing that, those points of interconnectedness, you see what it is doing? It is creating its own geometric pattern. It is creating its own spirals, its own infinity signs. Oh. You feel how big you are becoming now. You feel that this pattern energy, geometry, magnetics, gravity that you are creating is more real than the body you appear to be in. And yet, we are asking you to stay focused on the body as well, for it is your vessel and your instrument, and you have work to do in this reality. Is it liquid or is it thick? 
Is it like a mist? Is it like water? Is it like silk or satin? and it is taking your whole country and before you know it you are embracing grass and the clouds and rain and everything and the oceans and then oh then you touch the moon and before you know it This is actually the first place where you can recognize the same presence of Ak energy. Do you feel that? And do you feel that a star is actually sending back its presence all the way through the spiral? 
So it's beginning to work both ways now. Touching all that you have touched. Working its way back. Coming back into your heart. And what it says there is pretty simple. You are a star also. And things go so quick that while I was saying these things, you have touched thousands and thousands of stars already. And you have touched Mars, and you have touched Venus and its light cities, and you expand and expand and go beyond the solar. Or maybe now you can. The magnificence. And we expand and expand ever more. All the while, while this is taking place, the wire has woven his cocoon of safety around you. But very soon now, you will touch the edge of the cosmos with your spirally clay. The patterning has become so big now of the cosmos which is Lemoya itself. You will find your own face there because that is where you will touch the face of God. There we go. We see it now. As it melts away, so does the cocoon that was around you. Breathe in. Breathe in the beauty that lies beyond the cocoon, for it is mostly empty.
stay in this space. Stay in it for a while. And as you do, as you become aware of the full Akeneic self, the Ak energy that you have used this is basically your access code onto the Akinet. I am going to stop talking in a minute. I'm going to ask for the music to continue for several minutes more. In that stillness, I will continue my connection to you on the Akinet, the Akinet level. And there we will speak more. You feel it? I'm already going. There we will speak more. This will be your first conscious experience of Akeneik self and the Akenet. I will see you on the flip side. Enjoy the journey that is to come. Use the colors of love that you began this journey with as the wave that will take you there. There you will find immortality, infinity. that you are.